Given the amount of industrialisation along its banks, the River Medway turns out to be a lot nicer than it should be. For starters, the local yachties sail some great looking boats. So nice to get away from those acres of 40 foot long lozenges of French plastic that now infest the Solent. But the Medway is London's second river and probably carries almost as much commercial traffic as its big sister. The North Bank is pretty well developed. Oil tanks everywhere, two power stations and a container port. It's a busy place. But the southern side of the river is an environmental gem. Mud flats, saltings and birds. Much of the land beside the water is owned by the RSPB and God bless them for that. I love drifting with the tide, with just enough jib rolled out to give me some steerage. There's a village there that's well worth drifting into, following the tide as it refills the estuary. And they do say that you can learn a lot about the local waters by looking at the boats people choose to own. And I think you can also learn a lot about the local sailors. Traditional, modest, dependable sorts. These boats and their owners. And I let the boat go aground and then sit on the mud for a few minutes while waiting for the rising tide to refloat us. I promised myself that I'd never say we're in a hurry to get off the mud. The idea is just to embrace the mud, enjoy the mud, enjoy the way that it imposes time upon you, where the tide decides what happens. That's why you go sailing. There's an interesting bit of uh, ecosystem going on here. There's a scum, which you get, you know, anywhere. I mean, it's nutrients coming down, um, but pretty nutritious stuff by and large, and the plants here have captured it, and I guess that's going to settle around the roots of the plant as the tide goes down, and the plant will get quite a big nutrient kick from that scum, again adds to the ecosystem provided there's not too much of it. Too much of it would be a very bad thing. A bit of it's okay. Man, that's an ugly boat. Guess what it is? It's one of these. <laughs> Man, it's ugly. I know these boats will take the ground, but I wouldn't want that my boat to be like that at low tide. The reason I bought this boat was because it's got a triple keel and therefore when you sit on the mud <laughs> it should wind up level and by and large it does but there are times when it decides it doesn't want to go level in which case it does this to me. Now I have to say that that is quite a difficult angle to live at. I've been here for about um, four hours um, the lights come in nice for the birds so it should be nice as the sun goes down should be beautiful as long as the light doesn't disappear behind that bank of cloud which you can see over by the power station. The other thing about the boat tipping over this way is that it does give you a chance to look at the mud. Which I have to say is pretty interesting because as you can see the mud is just a mass of blowholes. All those little creatures have disappeared down into the mud. They've left a little tube to the surface, a spire, and I guess they had come out. As the water comes in, they'll all come out and start sifting through whatever the tide's brought in. And that's what the birds are after. But it's amazing. It just, you can see all these little collapsed bits where the worms 
and moving around. It's just been churned over and over and over and over and over and over and over. It's like super soil is what it is. So super that the plants really find it hard to get in chance because there's so much other activity going on. But the plants are here. You see it's grabbed hold of the rock. So there's three of them have all got rocks they've grabbed hold of. But to some extent they do pull the rocks around a bit. The seaweed is actually moving the rocks. It's kind of it's like a parachute. So when the tide comes in strongly, it'll, the rock will get dragged across the seabed, which is how they accumulate, I guess. It's being dragged there by little bits of diligent seaweed. But yeah, we're going to go this way, lads. And they find themselves on the shingle beach. You can see now the tide is coming in. It is bringing in some rubbish. There's a lot of bird crap there because it's obviously picking up the bird crap from along the beaches. What happens is, is as the tide goes down, the birds graze along the edge. They poo all the time. And so, you know, that's part of the cycle. And it's fine. We can add a little bit to that and actually add to the ecosystem. But all the chemicals and the quantity that we put in is very bad. This is an egret. They started to move up through the country now. You can also just hear the tide starting to slop underneath the boat between the keels. Here are the oyster catchers. Now you see that, that gull just moved in and took over the spot from the oyster catcher said, I'm having this. Gull's top dog. But the oyster catchers don't mind, they can get stuff elsewhere. Because look how often they pick up stuff. About every third time, I mean... Life for these oyster catchers is easy here. Easy. Worm after worm after worm. Then with the returning tide comes the first wave of aquatic predators. Here a sea spider. It's a first for me. Then come the fish following the water, trying to catch the early emerging worms and shellfish, while at the same time avoiding falling prey to the terns, the mastered fishes of the estuaries. Now as the tide's coming in, there are a few fish starting to come up with the tide. And then it's the turn of the fish eaters. The fish feeding birds will start working their way along the water line. And it's a game because right by the edge, the water's quite clear. Uh, but about five or six metres back, it's cloudy. And so the fish are all hanging around the edge of the cloudy and the clear. Because there's an advantage for them to being the first fish into an area as the tide comes in because they'll get the best picking so they want to be right on the edge but if they go over the edge then these fish eating birds can see them and will come down and get them. Then come the elegant avocets raking the surface layers of the mud with their strangely curved bills super sensitive to the slightest movement in the silky blend of water and infinitely tiny particles of silt. But there are times when this wonderful place seems so terribly vulnerable. Mm -hmm. 